Hello. So I was planning on making a different video today, but I haven't edited it yet because I still have to put all the videos onto my phone from my camera. And I decided to just sit down and make this because I've been thinking a lot today. Um, I just want to talk to you guys. It's been a while since I've really just like sat and talked. Like, I don't want to edit this too much. I don't want to, I don't want to, I just want to talk. So it's been hard. Um, things have been hard, mostly today, but just in general. I mean, I've, I've said this before, you know, it's, I mean, I think it's just quarantine, but also just everything combining in my life at the same time is uh, really hard. Um, it's been nine months since I've stopped testosterone and it it is getting easier every day, I think, um, but it's also just, I just have a lot of feelings about it still. I mean, I used to wake up, you know, maybe a month or two ago, I used to wake up every morning and think that my first thought when I would wake up in the morning would be my voice. I would just think I have to go through my day sounding like this. Every time I open my mouth, sounding like a man and everyone that I interact with is going to notice that and everyone that I meet in the future will notice it will be there forever and I used to wake up every morning thinking that would be my first thought and it would shape my entire day um and for the past month I haven't been waking up and thinking that I have been waking up and feeling okay for the most part. Um, I've had other things to think about, but I've also gotten past the point of, I think, thinking about it all the time. But sometimes I do still think about it. And when I do, it kind of comes all at once because I'm not thinking about it all the time anymore. But... I'm also thinking that I'm starting to get to the point where I look more like a woman than a man, um, especially to other people, and that's been nice, but it's also kind of made me sit and think that there are still parts of me that are so masculine, and I think it's just by virtue of the fact that I, you know... Personally, I'm one of the youngest detransitioners that I've seen uh, start hormones. Did that make sense? <laughs> uh, I haven't seen a lot of other detransitioners who started hormones as young as I did. I've only seen maybe one or two, maybe three, who have started hormones at or younger than 16. Um, and I feel like I also have one of the deepest voices of any detransitioner that I've seen or interacted with. And I, uh, I find it really hard because every day I don't really struggle with dysphoria from, you know, leftover from when I was trans because I stopped feeling dysphoria when I was several years into my transition and never thought about passing anymore. Like I literally never thought about it. I was passing from like day one of testosterone. So for the, for three years, I never worried about that. And so I, I never really felt dysphoric about, you know, my trans identity when I was living as a man. Um, 
because I knew other people saw me that way and I didn't have to really prove anything about myself to other people, especially when they didn't know that I was trans, which was a lot of people in my life at that point. But it's, uh, so I feel like I struggle with something that I haven't seen a lot of other detransitioners deal with um, in the community that I'm part of, um, which is feeling bad about my voice. You know, this far along into detransition, I, I honestly don't think that that's ever going to go away for me because I was so young that I got it to such a deep place and now it's just, this is how it is. It's not just going to go back. It's like physically impossible and it already got lighter than it was and I don't think it's gonna get lighter than this. I had like a bass voice <laughs> when I was trans. I haven't really, I don't think I've shown the sound of my voice when I first detransitioned, but it was completely different to how it sounds now. But I don't think it's going to change on its own anymore. I think it's already done as much as it possibly can. Um, and that's something that I struggle with every day, still. I mean, it's not constant like it was when I first detransitioned but it's still there and I think it might always be there. Um, and that's, you know, it's, it's hard because I feel like even those two years from 16 to 18 that I've, I've, that most people that I've seen had to wait until they were 18. And I feel like those two years make such a difference for the results of the vo like the dramatic results of the voice but also I guess it just depends on the person too but I really feel like my change in the voice was so drastic and immediate that I feel like it was solely because of my age like two weeks my voice was dropping already like fast <laughs> um and I think that's also a lot of the reason why I you know, didn't ever think about detransition. Um, I was so young when I started, I didn't think about it from every angle. And by the time I was old enough to see more than just the one side of it that I wanted, I was already so far into living as a man and passing and having all my documents changed. I didn't even think about I, I couldn't, I couldn't think about it because the only thing I could do was keep going. Um, and I think that's the big mistake of letting children and teenagers transition is that it's simply a one track mind for children and for teenagers who are into this ideology. So, yeah, I have been struggling. Sometimes I just think that I'll never be able to just be a woman again. Like, that I just kind of threw that away for myself when I was 16. And I've kind of come to terms with the fact that a lot of the reason why this happened is like, it was my decision to, to identify as trans and to want hormones. But I have a problem with saying it's my fault because I think there are so many systems at work that let this happen because if you just give a 16 year old everything that they want you're gonna end up with a very fucked up 16 year old 
So, um, yeah. All that I can really think and hope for myself is that pretty soon I'll look enough like a woman thanks to my still being pretty young. You know, that's the good side of things. Pretty soon I hope I just will look like the adult version of my teenage girl self. I'm already starting to get there. And maybe my voice won't matter as much <laughs> by the time I look completely back to the way I did hopefully probably not exactly you know I used to have this like really really pointy chin you can tell that it's still very pointy but I think I grew some like muscles <laughs> from the testosterone that are still there like this this part that's from the testosterone, 100%. Um, and I don't know if that will ever go away. Because you, you, can, you can see that it's a little bit masculine. But it's all these little things that combine that, I don't know, that I didn't really know about or think about too much you know when you're a 16 year old that wants something it's just like look at how look at that I want that <laughs> look at that trans guy making YouTube videos I want that I want to be him sometimes you know sometimes I still get that a little bit but only because I know it would be easier to still live as a man for me even with the way that I look it's just my voice like, I think the voice overrides any look that you have, which is hard. But, you know, it's it's getting more to the point of being like 50-50. This is some lavender essential oil. Just like... That's nice. Oh, that's really, that's pleasant. I think three years is such a long time. My body is still working really hard to reverse all the effects. And even with my voice, I, I think my body's trying to like reject all of this extra cartilage down here. Cause it's like a lot, <laughs> like, there is a lot. I had a prominent vocal tract before I took testosterone. It wasn't like this, obviously, but it was creased and noticeable um, when I did this. I mean, obviously anyone's looks like this when you, you know, but mine was it more than normal. But I mean, now it's just like out there. Especially my fucking Adam's apple is so annoying. But I'm like, I don't hold weight there after being off of testosterone. Like I had a really fat neck <laughs> when I was on testosterone and now I don't. And all of the weight that used to be on my neck is gone. And so it's left this huge like protrusion because this is not how my body was naturally. So I'm like having trouble swallowing sometimes, like food gets stuck in my throat. I, I don't know if that is related to the testosterone at all, but it feels like not right because it is so far out of my neck and did not, I was not built like this. I was not built for this. And it's just hard. It's just hard because, you know, there's no going back in time. 
Um, I think that's just the hardest part is coming to terms with the permanent decisions, knowing that I made them when I was a teenager, fucking stupid teenager. I didn't know anything, you know, and I just want to prevent that from happening to anyone else. I mean, can I just say, like, especially for girls, like teenage girls, I was done with puberty. I was done with puberty. I was done growing. I was done with everything, all the body changes. I was done with the body changes. My body still needed to grow as into an adult, but I wasn't preventing anything from happening. I already had boobs, I already had wide hips, I already had periods. My height, I wasn't getting any taller, you know? Why do you have to put a 16 year old girl on testosterone? Like I, I understand why a, a male to female might want to get on puberty blockers at 16 because puberty is still going on for them sometimes. But not me. I was done. An 18-year-old who is more than, more capable than a 16-year-old of making that decision, why? They probably just, they, they thought I was going to kill myself, and I'm pretty sure that's like, Just think about how fucked up that is. Because here's the thing. I remember that I told my mom at one point that I might die if I didn't get on hormones because I can't stand to live another day with people seeing me as a girl. Of course, that scared the shit out of her and she just wanted me to live. So yeah, the parents don't know better you know, and the kids are repeating shit that they've heard from the trans community and the mainstream media now that are just telling people that trans people are just going to die. Like, you're just going to spontaneously combust if, like, trans people don't just die all the time like you think they do. <laughs> A 16-year-old... <laughs> well, to be fair, like... <laughs> What I needed was very intensive trauma therapy, not hormones, because that didn't fix anything. It doesn't fix anything. It puts a fucking, what's the, it puts a flex seal on your problems. And then you're like, yeah, this is great. This is great. This is exactly what I needed. And then three years later, you're like, I want to die because I sound like a man and I look like a man and I'm a female. And everyone thinks I'm a man, and now people think I'm a trans woman, and I'll never be seen as a woman again, maybe, for the rest of my life, and I'll always sound like a man, and I decided to do that when I was 16, and now I want to kill myself forever every day until the day I die because I sound like a man as opposed to waiting a few more years until my brain was developed to make a decision to maybe transition if I was still unhappy with the way that I looked and how people perceived me, but soon enough I realized that's not the point of life and it doesn't fucking matter, and also I love being a woman, and also I'm a lesbian. Thank you for watching. <laughs> Hit the like button if you like the video, subscribe if you want to see more. I will see you again soon, hopefully, with the video that I was going to upload today. Hopefully, yay. Okay, bye.